day two, back in the old room. Okay, so I want to kind of start by going over some potential questions from uh, that assignment 24-1, or 24-2, excuse me, 24-2. So let's talk about number 11 and make sure everybody's cool with the two versions of this right-hand rule. So number 11, you've got a wire that's on top that has a current going like this, and you have a wire that's underneath like this, and you want to find the net magnetic field in between the two of them, okay? So there's no electrons, protons, nothing like this, okay? You're just trying to find the net magnetic field. So let's start with, the, with this one. So if you look at this one, here's this one. You wrap your hand like this, okay? The current's going to be coming around like this. So from the top wire, okay? So from the top wire, the magnetic field from it's going to be going to the right. So this is going to be the magnetic field from the top wire. It's going to be going like this. Now, underneath there, you've got a bottom wire, okay? So you like this, okay? So the bottom wire, the current's going to be going this way. So I'm going to take my thumb, point it in that direction, curl my fingers, and so from the bottom wire's perspective, that magnetic field is going to be coming down like this. So that magnetic field will be pointing down. So that's the magnetic field from the bottom wire. So then the resultant is going to be a magnetic field like this. So I want to make sure everybody's cool with this. So here's your top wire coming around like that. That's generating this magnetic field in the middle. This one's going this way. I curl my fingers like this. That's going to be going like this. So just like two forces, they're going to be going down like this. Now, when you get to question number 18, and I want to make sure, again, everybody's cool with the terminology. So in number 18, you've got an electron that's going up and to the left. This is going to be important. It's an electron that's going to be going up and to the left, and you're told that the force is coming out of the page. So you want to be careful about how you're going to describe this motion. So I, in this situation, I'd recommend just using your left hand and using the left hand rule because it's an electron. So you've got the electron coming up like this, okay? The force is coming out of the page. So these three fingers are going to be pointing out of the page, out like this which means my index finger is going to be pointing this way. Now, when you describe that position, this index finger is like in the plane of the page, okay? So it's like going like this. So it's, imagine you have the, this board as this plane. So the electron's going in the plane of the board. The force is going to make that thing curl out. So that means that magnetic field is going to be in the plane of the page, pointing up and to the right. So when you describe that motion, okay, you could say like in the plane of the page at 45 degrees. So you'd say it's in the page at 45 degrees. So you have to be careful about like, oh, like up and down. So when you say up, do you mean like in the plane of the page up, in the plane of the page down? or are you talking out of the page? So be careful when you're describing the directions of these fields. Okay, so uh, let me give you a hint. Your answers on the problems to eight and nine should be the same, okay? And the reason I, I chose those problems is because of the fact that, you know, you're, you're talking about, uh, so on number, I think number eight, let me make sure I got it. Number eight, I think that's the question about the, uh, oh yeah, from the magnetic field generated from the transmission lines. And number nine is, is, the, is the electric blanket. So if the reason that I had you do that one, especially number eight, is because, yeah, there's a magnetic field, but if you compare that to the magnetic field of the Earth, it's only like 4% of the magnetic field of the Earth. So that's if you're standing directly underneath them. Okay, if you're any distance away from them, I was like, you know, the magnetic field of the Earth is so much stronger than that. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you really need to make a magnet, speaking of the magnetic field of the Earth, if you take a piece of like thin rod, 
and you get it red hot and you lay it on an anvil and you pound it with a hammer when it's really, really red hot and it's lined up with the magnetic field of the earth, it will actually become a, a, a weak magnet because it forces those magnetic domains to line up with the magnetic field of the earth. So here's a survival tip. If you need to make a magnet, get it thin like a needle or, or some type of metal, get it red hot, hit it with a hammer so you're like jarring it, and then when it cools, then those, then those magnetic domains will line up with the earth and you have a magnet. Okay, so today's lesson, this contraption right here, kind of cool. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at what's going to happen with forces and wires. Now, this is, a, this is a tough lecture to give, but once you get done, you go, oh, that's kind of cool. So what we're going to do is that we're, we're going to look at a new equation. This is the one that we talked about yesterday, QVB sine theta. And again, unless you're at anything other than a 90 degree angle, don't worry about this. Usually it's just going to be QVB. Here's your charge, here's your velocity, here's your magnetic field. Now, this is going to be the force on a wire, okay? So this is the current that's going in the wire. Got to have that. This is the length of the wire, and this is the magnetic field. So usually this is, it's written as ILB. Most of the people, most of the time, would just refer to it as bill, okay? Force on a wire equals bill. So... Again, here's your magnetic field, here's your current, here's your length. And so hopefully that makes sense. The more current that you have, the stronger that force is going to be. The stronger the magnetic field is going to be, the stronger the force is going to be. And the longer the wires are, the more force that you're going to have. Okay? So that's kind of how it's going to play out. All right. So this contraption, what I have right here, is got, he's got these brass electrodes that can spin out really easily because I'm not held in very tightly. So let me get that put back. Okay, there we go. So they spin really easily. Okay. So what these arrows on the front are indicating is that I'm going to send the current in both directions up the wire. So the, both of these, this current, by a traditional sense, I mean a positive charge, is going to be going up this current. So what I'm going to do is I've got this little red button here. And I've also got a magnet here. So what you'll see, and I can't do this all at the same time, so you just have to take my word for it, is that you'll, you'll be able to see what happens with the wires, the magnet not so much. But what you'll see is when I push this button and create this current, the magnet flips out because then you're creating that magnetic field around that wire. So I'm going to push this. Now this is going to be important. I've got these two wires that the current is going in the same direction, both up. So when I do that, okay, I'll kind of bring them like this, okay. And when I do that, notice that they become closer to each other. Now this is in contrast to poles of magnets. If these were poles of magnets, and I tried to bring two north poles together, they would repel each other. But with currents in wire, it's the opposite of what you're used to thinking of. You're used to opposites attracting and likes repelling. Wires are the opposite of that mindset. So when I push this together and send that current through it, that current is going in the same direction and they begin to attract. And what you'll see is that the little, the little compass here is wigging out and it's spinning all over the place. All right, so here's why this works. So you, you, this, is, this is complicated, so stay with me here. So we're going to call this wire one, and we're going to send the current in this direction, okay? And then we're going to have current two down here, okay? So this is going to get complicated. So... Stay with me. So, but for now, don't even worry about this current down here, okay? We'll deal with that later. So, I'm just going to use the single right-hand rule, and I'm going to send the current in this direction, and then I'm going to wrap my hand around like this, okay? So, this is just your basic, simple, first manifestation of the right-hand rule. So, when I do that, I'm going to have dots up here, but more importantly, down here, I'm going to have X's, okay? 
So these x's down here are created by current number one. Okay? So the current's going this way, that's creating x's down here. Okay, good with that. Simple rule. Now we're going to figure out what's going to happen in current number two. Now again, we're going off the traditional definition of a current that it's a positive charge moving in this direction. So I've got a current going in this direction. The magnetic field is pointing into the page, okay, because I've got X's, right? So then my finger points up. So this wire here is going to feel an attractive pull towards this one. So this force, oh, sorry about that. This force from the second wire on the first is going to tend to pull and attract it towards this wire. Okay? So here's your steps. Move this wire in this direction. Here's this current. Wrap your fingers around. This wire is going to create a magnetic field that's going into this page. Then you look at charged particles going in this direction, impacted by a magnetic field that's pointing into the page, and then your force points upward. Okay? Got all that. We're good. Okay. Whew. Now we need to look at what's going to happen with, with the bottom wire. So now we're going to act like the second wire. Here's the second wire. Don't worry about the top wire. We'll get to that. So this one is sending a current in this direction. And I'm going to wrap my hands around like this. Okay? So this wire up here at the top, okay, this wire up here at the top, is going to experience O's coming out of the page. So we'll change up the color a little bit, make it easier to see. So this is going to have O's up here from wire number two. Okay? So this is going to have O's. Now, if we do the same thing, we have the current going this way. Now we're going to focus on what's going to happen in wire number one. We have the current going in this direction. The magnetic field is coming out of the page, which means our fingers are going to point downward. So this one is also going to create a downward force towards this one. So this one's going this way. Point your fingers going down. Both feel an attractive force. Okay? So this is why when you have light currents, they have an attractive force. Now, I'm going to reach I'm going to change this configuration. So I got to do a little bit of work here. And I got to look at the diagram to see. Let me make sure I got that right. I really don't want to blow this thing up. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip this one around. Now, hopefully when this works. Now, now these wires, the currents are going in opposite directions. So now when I push this, okay, they repel each other. So now, let's figure out why they repel each other. So when I look at this, so we've got current number one going in this direction. We have current number two going in this direction. Okay, so this is what we've got. Okay. So, actually, no, I screwed that up. Hold on. They're going in opposite directions. It's going in this direction. Okay? So, here's the deal. So, again, we're going to start with current number one going in this direction. We got this. We wrap our hands around like this. Okay? And Bruce is sitting in the back going, I know where this is going. Okay? Okay? And Eliza's going, oh, I see it too. And Ben's thinking about what can I write on the wall? And he's looking at Eric going, what do you think we should write? Oh, something about wires and forces. I don't know. 
Okay, so we got this going like this. So again, down here, we're going to have X's from wire one. Okay. Now, now we're going to look at wire two. Now this is this is where this gets a little bit kind of screwed up. So you've got the current going this way, right, like this. The magnetic field is going into the page created by this wire. So this has an external magnetic field that's going in this direction. Then our fingers are going to point downward. So this force on the wire number two is going to tend to push this thing away. Okay? And again, you have two distinct right-hand rules. One determines on this one, I1, wrapping it around like this, going into the page. Then the second one is the particles are going in this direction, the charged particles. The magnetic field is going into the page, and the force is going to be acting downward. Okay? So that's going to be the key to this one. Now, we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to look at what's going to happen with current number two. So current number two is going in this direction, which means up here, when I curl my hand, this is going to experience a magnetic field that's also going into the page, okay? So this is from the second magnetic field, not the first, okay? So now I've got the current going in this direction, the magnetic field is going into the page, and my fingers are going to point upward. So this one is going to experience a force as well. So this is why in their opposite directions, they repel each other. Because the magnetic fields are pushing, are, are such that they experience that force so that they repel each other. So you have to, I have to undo a little bit of learning because you all are used to saying, oh, with magnetic fields, or, or you all are used to thinking that, oh, likes rep uh, repel and unlikes attract. With wires, it's the opposite. So if they're in opposite directions, they repel each other. If they're in the same direction, they attract. Okay? So that's the big lesson. Now, when you look at the force on the wire, okay? Now, this is going to be if you have two wires involved, okay? So you have F equals mu naught L I1 I2 divided by 2 pi D. So what this does, and, and if you ever need this equation, I will give this to you, okay? But hopefully this makes sense. So this comes from, this mu naught is because, of, you know, if you look at magnetic fields, force on a magnetic field, so that's where that mu naught comes from. So this is the length of the wire. This is the current in one wire. This is the current in the second wire. And this is how far apart they are. Which, again, hopefully this makes sense. Oh, right, if they're further apart, they won't have as much force. If, and then look at this, if one of them has no current, in other words, if I only send a, a current through one of them, and the other one is zero, guess what? They won't experience any force. So typically, though, what you do is you, the current going through both of these is the same, okay? Not always, but typically that's what makes it easy. So again, you can calculate a force and go, oh, okay, right. Hey, here's the force. That's going to happen with that wire. So this is why I had to get this lecture up here so that you all could see this handy-dandy little thing. And uh, yes, I bought this just specifically to give one lecture one day out of the year, but it's really, really cool to see. So anyway, uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, we'll post this. We'll talk uh, more about magnetic fields. But uh, yeah, this is kind of one of the big things to get through. All right. See you, kids.